Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup on People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Let's look at the main headlines on Monday. Asian migrants stranded at US border face mass deportation. Palestinians hold protests as Israeli forces recapture all the Gilboa escapees. Latin American and Caribbean leaders hold 6th Regional CELAC Summit. Over 70% of Lebanon's population pushed into poverty as crisis worsens. In our first story, the United States has initiated mass deportation of Haitian migrants in the state of Texas. Over 12,000 people are stranded in the city of Del Rio after crossing the border from Mexico. Over 320 people have deport, been deported to the Haitian capital of Port-au-Prince. U.S. officials have stated that six flights are expected to take off on September 21st. The lack of food and water in the area has forced migrants to wade to the Rio Grande River to bring supplies from Mexico. Officials stated on Sunday that those who crossed the border would not be allowed back. Thousands of migrants from Central America and Haiti have been trying to reach the U.S. through Mexico. U.S. border officials arrested over 195,000 people in the month of August alone. 3,300 people have already been removed from Del Rio, with some deported and others in detention centers. The U.S. Supreme Court has also revived the Trump-era migration protection protocols. Asylum seekers will be forced to stay in Mexico while they await immigration hearings in the U.S. In our next story, Israeli forces have captured the two remaining Palestinian prisoners who had freed themselves from the Gilboa prison. Forces claimed that Ayman Kamamji and Munadil Nafiat surrendered in Jenin on Sunday. All six prisoners have been placed under detention. The lawyers and rights groups have reported torture, including beatings and sleep deprivation. Meanwhile, hundreds of people took to the streets in Gaza on Sunday in support of the prisoners. Protests were also held in Haifa, near the Jalama prison. Protesters condemned Israel's policy of administrative retention and demanded that all prisoners be released. At least 520 Palestinians are being detained without charge or trial. Six such detainees are currently on a hunger strike. Among them is Kayat Fasfus, who has been on strike for 67 days. Rights group Adamir has also stated that over 100 Palestinians have been arrested since the Gilboa jailbreak. The figure does not include the people arrested within Israel. Palestinian prisoners have also stated that collective punitive measures are still operating in jails. At least 100 people in the Ofer jail will reportedly start a hunger strike on September 21st. We now go to Latin America, where the sixth summit of the community of Latin American and Caribbean states was held over the weekend. The meeting was attended by 31 countries who put forth a 44-point declaration. The document condemned the huge disparities in vaccine access across the world. Signatories have called for the creation of infrastructure needed to make and distribute medical supplies. They have also approved the creation of a fund to address the climate crisis. All 31 countries have agreed to bring a common position to the UN COP26 climate conference in Glasgow. Bolivian President Luis Arce also stated that the Organization of American States did not represent Latin America. The signatories also called for an end to unilateral coercive measures, including the actions against Cuba and Venezuela. The severe damage caused by the US sanctions in Venezuela were documented in a recent UN report. The country is facing a food crisis with 73% fall in imports between 2015 and 2019. As per the FAO, there has been a 213.8% increase in undernourishment and chronic hunger. Sanctions have restricted access to blood reagents, antibiotics and critical medical supplies. Hospital equipment is reported to be functioning only at 20%. Sanctions have also restricted repair work on water systems, electricity lines and internet services. And finally, we look at the very disturbing situation in Lebanon. One in six people in the country are now reliant on UN assistance for survival. The economic crisis in the country has steadily worsened, with 74% of people now living in poverty. Fuel shortages have also led to electricity blackouts lasting around 20 hours a day. This has pushed the healthcare system near collapse. According to the WHO, hospitals in the country are currently operating at 50% capacity. Around 40% of doctors and 30% of registered nurses have left the country. The government has also cut down subsidies on food, fuel and other basic necessities. According to the World Food Programme, food inflation has written by 557% since 2019. Meanwhile, the Energy Ministry increased the price of fuel by another 38% last week. The hike was announced just as over a million gallons of Iranian fuel was bought into Lebanon by Hezbollah. Trucks entered the town of Al Ain carrying diesel across the border from Syria. A fuel tanker was docked in the country to avoid US sanctions on Lebanon. Hezbollah has stated that it will distribute the fuel for free to government hospitals, public water pumps and orphanages. That's all the time we have for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.